Hi everybody, my name is Matthew Shepard. I work for the Xerces Society and I'm currently um, Director of Communications and Outreach. Although I spend all my time you know, editing and working on publications, it was the pollinators that got me into this work and I started off chasing after bees and working on habitat and teaching people about bees and that's still the thing that I love most of all. And today we're up here on um, Mount Hood in northwest of Oregon in the Cascade Range and we're up here looking for bumblebees in particular and so I'm going to go out um, go hunt for some I'm sure I'll find um, several different species and then we'll talk about them. Wow well this is this is really exciting the one that I just found here I'm going to take it out of the net and then we'll take a look. This is the western bumblebee around here she's very very easy to identify because she's almost all black apart from a yellow stripe over her shoulders and it looks like her tail has been dipped in white paint. You can see she's also got a huge amount of pollen that she's been collecting. Um, there's great orange gingery colored lumps on her back legs. That's the uh, pollen from the, the lupins here which is the flower that she was foraging on and I just netted her from. The western bumblebee used to be one of the most common and most abundant bumblebees all the way from Alaska down to Colorado and from the, the Pacific coast into the Rockies. And in the last 15 to 20 years, from great areas of that range, they almost disappeared completely. Um, and where we are up here on Mount Hood around the Timberline area is one of the, the few areas um, in this part of Oregon where we still find them regularly. Um, and so that's why I'm so excited to find one today. It's, she's just such a beautiful bee. So this is a, a, a different species of bumblebee. Its um, scientific name is Bombus bifarius. This one, is, as you can see, this one is very different colors from the, the Western bumblebee. So the one, what you can see on this one, it also has the orange pollen on its, on its back legs. Um, bees whatever type of bee, whatever species, um, the females will have somewhere on their body where they can they, they can carry pollen around. Bumblebees are like honeybees and they have what's called um, a pollen basket on their back legs, which is just a, a broad piece of leg that has very stiff hairs around it. And they pack the pollen into that by mixing it with nectar so that it makes a, um, a pasty lump, a bit like Play-Doh, I imagine. One of the things that bumblebees are particularly good at and fairly unusual is that they can what's called buzz pollinate. And so some flowers, uh, the pollen is dry and you have to shake the flower to get the pollen out. And the bumblebees can do that. They're able to kind of disconnect their wings from their wing muscles and then they just shiver their wing muscles and that makes their whole body vibrate and they'll um, be holding on tight to that flower and, and you can actually hear it. it's called buzz because it sounds just like the note of the, the middle C on a piano. And if you can just hear it, it goes bzz, 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 and you know that they're, they're shaking the pollen out of those flowers. We've, we've moved down, we're no longer up in the mountains, we're now in this, this beautiful garden, this, this lovely garden, which is an education garden created by the Washington County Master Gardeners. We want to show that you don't have to be in a natural area um, to find bees. You can find some amazing bees wherever you go. Well, one of the things that the county gardeners have installed in their education garden are these incredible mason bee houses. Um, I'm, I'm sure you've come across the idea of mason bee houses where you, the, the mason bees, they just need um, a tunnel and then each mason bee will make her own nest down that tunnel. It's not just the mason bees that will nest in there. There's also some leafcutter bees that are nesting in here as well. Um, and one way which you can tell leafcutters from other bees is that they carry their pollen on the underside of their body. They're called leafcutter bees because when they make their nest down these tunnels, they create the little brood cells, a series of little brood cells down the tunnel with pieces of leaf which they neatly cut from plants such as roses um, and, and they take a little semicircular piece of leaf out of the rose. What I have here, I've got examples of longhorn bees um, and they're called longhorn bees because the males have really, really long antennae. 
The females don't have such long antennae, but what they do have are very hairy back legs. And that's how they carry the pollen um, back from the nest. So a lot of people get confused between bees and wasps. Uh, a lot of times people say, oh boy, it was a, a bee wrecked my picnic. And it probably wasn't a bee. Um, it was almost certainly a, a yellow jacket. But yellow jackets are a type of wasp and not a type of bee. But yellow jackets also are quite an unusual type of wasp because they live in a, in a large colony. Most wasps are solitary, so one wasp will be making her own nest. And most of the wasps and, and most of the species of bees, they nest in the ground. And that's why I'm, I'm always happy to see areas of bare ground. Um, because the, these areas are just the kind of spot where a bee or a wasp might start digging in and tunneling. And she may well make a nest in here. Of all the different types of wasps, I have one here that we found. And this is one called a sand wasp. It's called a sand wasp because they typically nest in sandy ground. And she's a rather beautiful wasp. This one has bright green eyes and her body is very striped. And when, when you get it in good light, you can see that the stripes are just a really pale sky blue color. One of the ways to tell the difference between bees and wasps is that wasps are not collecting pollen. So they don't have any kind of way to carry pollen. They don't have a hairy legs or a, a hairy tummy. They don't have pollen baskets on their back legs, nothing like that. So they, they really don't have many hairs at all. Um, wasps are great to have around because they're predators. They're catching insects that we may not want to have, um, plant bugs and all, all sorts of aphids and other stuff that we may not like. One thing about almost anywhere that you go, and certainly if you're looking in gardens, is you're going to find a lot of honeybees. Um, honeybees are not native to North America. Uh, they came across with the early settlers. You'll find them everywhere. Um, and they're also amazingly important for our agriculture and our farms. In the end, it doesn't matter what sort of bees, whether it's a honeybee um, or you know, a bumblebee or some other um, native solitary bee. What they need is they need flowers, they need places to nest, uh, whether that's a, an old snag or a nest box or bare ground. Um, they also, they need areas to be free of pesticides. Well, thank you for spending this time in the garden with me, chasing some bees and, and looking at the amazing life out here. You can check out our YouTube channel. You can go to our website. Most importantly, just get outside and go find some bees for yourself. They're amazing. In fact, I am going off to catch myself some more bees because it's the best thing to do.